A podcast listener named Nathan writes in to ask this. Pastor John, is online dating a good way to meet your future spouse if you don't meet anyone through your church family? I say that the biblical issue here is not how you meet, but whom you marry. <laughs> uh, 1 Corinthians 7.39. Let's just get this clear, and then I'll circle around to, to the other. Um, a, a wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. So a Christian is not free to marry outside the Lord. Or 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So biblically, the bottom line for the follower of Christ is, will you marry only a believer? And what saddens me, Tony, is how many believers get so entangled emotionally with unbelievers that they either throw away their convictions or they stand on their head to see the other person as a believer when he's not. So let me make it a little more precise. A mature believer will want his or her spouse not just to profess some kind of creed or be willing to go to church, what, what they will want is not just a marriage that is minimally Christian, but a Christian marriage. And a Christian marriage is described in Ephesians 5 like this. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife as, the Christ, is the, as Christ is the head of the church. And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, what this means is a Christian woman won't just look for a man who has a cross tattooed on his shoulder, but a man who is ready to die daily in the sacrificial calling of leading a home. Love as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And a Christian man won't just look for a woman who wears a cross around her neck, but is willing to die as she submits to his leadership in reliance upon Christ. Both husband and wife are engaged in constant self-denial as they live out the beauty of the Christian marriage. Jesus said, no one can be his disciple unless they take up their cross and follow him. The Christian man or woman who wants to marry a, a follower of Jesus must look for a spouse who has learned what it is to die to self in allegiance to Jesus. Now, back to the Internet. He's circling around. If, if you know what you're looking for, the way I've tried to describe it, I would think you can rule out a lot of losers by using the Internet. It won't take long to learn from Facebook and Twitter and blogs if this man or woman is passionate for Jesus or if Jesus is an incidental mark on the shoulder or a trinket around the neck. Then, if contact happens, there are great questions to ask. And I wrote 50 of them down. I don't know, Tony, you might want to link to this document. I think it's at the Desiring God website, 50 questions that, that couples should ask. And, and they could be asked, you know, on the internet but before you even meet the kind of things that will really reveal uh, what people are committed to. So, answer, I'm fine with meeting someone online and learning as much as possible about them. I've met numerous couples recently who said they met online and they're happily married. They're both mature Christians. So I got zero problem with that. The great question is, are you mature enough to discern a worthy spouse? Put your energies into becoming that kind of person. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor John. And that resource, Questions to Ask When Preparing for Marriage, is one of our most popular resources on the website. It's now easiest to find in the ebook we created, which is titled Preparing for Marriage Help for Christian Couples. It's there. You can go to our website, desiringgod.org, click on books, and look for the title Preparing for Marriage. Another very common question we receive in the Ask Pastor John mailbox is a question over cremation. Cremation or burial? 
We'll hear from Pastor John tomorrow on the Ask Pastor John podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.